Hello everyone and welcome to our Let's Play series of Torment Tides of Numenera. This is Colonel RPG as usual and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we talk to an Anine. Not really. We're not gonna talk to it. I'm, I mean, maybe we are. Let's see what happens. Oh! <gasps> A large and agitated beast looms over you. It is an anine, a beast of burden. These creatures are normally docile, but this one bears its teeth and snaps at you as you draw near. It rakes the air with its stubby claws. Uh, okay, let's examine it first and see if, he's, if it's wounded or something. Staying just out of a biting range, you see blood around the anine's mouth. It looks as uh, like it has been bleeding or possibly feeding on something. Uh, okay, let's keep examining it. Why Why can I examine it again? Hmm. Let's try and touch it. There's a thing. You saw that? You saw that line? It's like the lines, it's like these lines over here. Except it's over there. It wasn't in here, was it? It was actually on the... Hmm, anyway. As you approach, it snaps its head forward, snarling. Okay, let's try and pull the hand back. Because, um, it, it, it probably is the best course of action here. Let's see what happens. You jerk your hand back, uh, and the anine snap uh, jaw snap shut, stench scant inches from your fingertips. Okay, so I can't do anything there. I just avoided being bit or something. So I can't do anything to this guy. That's fine. But we do have. I mean, he's been feeding on something, and uh, there's Sky ED. A pale, heavy-set merchant woman stands by an agitated Anine. Her eyes seem to have trouble focusing on you, and when you do, she drops them, her hands nervously adjusting the scarf around her neck. Need help, she thinks. Can't think. I must... What? Is that, is that static? Because... Hmm, it's, it's probably written by a different person. Because before the game, when it was static, it just wrote static between the two things. Uh, I'm Skaidi. You here to trade? She says. Uh... What, there, there may be something wrong with your anine over there. He has blood around its mouth. She pulls her scarf up. I don't need strangers telling me how to take care of my beast. Thank you. Do you want to buy something or not? You notice there are splotches of blood on her scarf. Oh. Leave her alone, she thinks. It's not the beast's fault. Uh, well, let's try and see under her scarf. You have a little something on your scarf, right, right there under your chin. Okay, persuasion. I'm just gonna be able to go with my edge and my, um, effort. Well, actually, just edge in my... what? No, just edge. For edge. Man, fantastic. <laughs> I do? Where? And the woman pulls the scarf from her neck to look at it, revealing jagged, still bleeding teeth marks on her throat. She sees you staring at them and realizes she's been duped. Dirty trickster! She snarls as she pulls the scarf tight again. Go try your games on someone else! Please, just leave us alone, she thinks. Skady glances at her anine... Eyes wide, like a child with a guilty conscience. You recall the Anine's bloody mouth and uh, odd behavior, and it occurs to you that its teeth mar match the size and pattern of the bite mark on her neck. Oh, just now, huh? Just now it occurs to me. Okay. But Anine are herbivores, and as far as you know, they can't digest meat or blood. Hmm. She wrenches her eyes away from her Anine, closes them tightly, and begins to shake her head rapidly back and forth, muttering incoherently. Her whispers sound more like buzzing and hissing than words. Okay, so it might be the same thing as before. What is going on? Please just leave us alone. Leave her alone, it's not the beast's fault. Hmm. Need help? She needs help, though. I can help. Just... Wait a minute. No. Uh, Okay, so I can help. Just just tell me what's happening to you. Okay, that's an easy enough. I'm gonna go with that. Just to make sure I don't miss the 95%. As has happened before. Oh, I pressed... Oh, yeah, it's loading. My anine, it's... It feeds on me, she says. Suckles the blood from my neck. For some reason, I can't... No, I, I don't want to make it stop. And she shakes her head, trying to clear it. But that's a, a lie. I do want it to stop. Her voice quavers in terror. I think the Bloom did this, to my Anine and to me, tied us together somehow, it's in our heads, I can't, I can hear it whisper to me, uh, <laughs> you can't resist the Bloom, uh, just give in, huh, mm. well, fight the Bloom, Skydy, concentrate on the whispers and drown, uh, and drown them, drown, drown, yeah, drown them out, push them from your mind, okay, that's just another preservation check, let's go with that, pretty easy, not a big deal, uh, so, yeah, there it is. You can see the woman struggle, her whole body shakes. You faintly hear a whispering cacophony of sounds, chittering and buzzing, lashing out in, rain in rage as it fights back. Then it falls silent. The merchant's eyes soften and focus. Oh, there it, there it went again. You saw that? 
It's not the first time either. Or the second time either. She shakes her head as if clearing it. I... I did it. The voices are gone. Janine also shakes its head, snorts, and settles back on its haunches. The merchant turns to you with clearer eyes. Thank you. I don't know what was wrong with me. The, the bloom... There it is. The bloom got in my head and changed my Janine too. But I think she's back to her old self. And she hesitates, then nods. You come back anytime you like. I'll give you a discount. It's the least I can do. Okay, thank you. Uh, I hope you can pay more for my uh, for my stuff. The now docile Anine sits on its haunches, staring placidly into this into the distance. Uh huh. So Skydy, feeling a little bit better? Skydy smiles warmly as you approach. Hello again, again, my friend. What can I do for you? Um. So can you tell me about the bloom? I travel through here a lot, she says. But maybe not after this. Too dangerous. No matter what the Mem Memovitos guards say about her keeping it safe. Ah, good read, a good chance for profit though. Bloom folk need outside goods, and you can find uh, unique things here, things from uh, other places. Still, once bitten, twice shy, if you know what I mean. I'm gotten as soon, uh, I'm gone as soon as I sell the last of my stock. Well, it's not actually twice shy; it's just one and a half shy, I guess, because she's still selling her stuff and not getting out of here. Um, so, um, what do you know about the Memovida? She nods her head at the imposing gates across the courtyard. They say she runs this place from that fortress over there. I've never seen her, though, just her thugs. It's almost like she doesn't dare come out. Okay, can you tell me anything else about her? Nope. And even I knew... And even I knew something... What? And even if I knew something, it's not safe to say. Okay, yeah, there's a, mi a missing if. Uh, if I knew something, it's not safe to say. Okay, well, um, how did the bloom get into your head? What happened? I don't know. The bloom does strange things to you if you stay here long enough. Not my Anine and I drank water from that well. That might have something to do with it, or maybe not. I'm, but I'm not letting her drink it again, that's for sure. That's not water. That's green. I mean, uh, excuse the hiccup. Uh, the water might, might, yeah. It might be water. <laughs> Pure as the cliffs, he says. He said, she thinks, damn that gr grizzler, it really isn't pure as the cliffs. I mean, it might actually be the cliffs, if the, are, the cliffs are green, then uh, what do I know? Uh, how is your anine now? Shaken, but better. And now that I know this can happen, I won't risk it ha happening again. We're getting out of the bloom as soon as I sell my stock. We're not coming back. Okay, well, it's all fine. Uh, I want to see what you have for sale because I have a lot of stuff to sell myself. Uh, also, we need to se check this uh, mirror castle over here. So this is a liquid death, an oddity. So sell. Uh, what do we have? A oddity, a hardened sell. What is this? Uh, an enigmatic sphere. Sell. Not usable. Uh, impossible blade. A, rel a relativist, relativistic, relativistic. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'm gonna keep the mirror caster. Relativistic damage and another mirror castle over here. So these were the two we used, right? No, wait a minute. What is that? I remember this one. Oh, the soundtrack. Uh, heavenly submission. Just sell uh, this terrible thing. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna use it, but I'm gonna keep it around just in case. Uh, another artifact over here. The eyes of finite. Yeah, I looked at that before as well. Have humans, and I'm gonna keep that one. Uh, an oddity. This brightly colored aquatic creature. Yeah, that's the weird thing that we found before. And then we have other stuff. If you use that, that one I need. A great sword over here I'm gonna keep just because. Let's see what she sells. Uh, we got ourselves a max effort plus one on all non-combat tasks. That's an interesting one. Probably not needed. Uh, but still. Uh, Pel Pelucid Wrap. Didn't we find one of these before? Wait a minute. That's the one we have equipped. That's right. A clockwork, uh, clockwork strut plus 30% evasion and uh, plus one on quick fingers. It does have negative effects. Oh, it's a bonded artifact, so it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but I do want to keep my money because we do need the money. So that's going to be that for now. Can I move you? No. Oh, I can. Can I? Well, I should be able to. Okay, that's good. Um, so thank you very much, and uh, I will do some of these. So in terms of Cyclonic Cube... Translucent panes spin behind the smooth glass of this cube, often defying the dimensions containing them. You catch glimpses of various objects or scenes contained within. You clear your throat involuntarily, and the pace of spinning goes even faster, as though the cube were waiting for you to speak or ask a question. Now, I will... I don't remember where I got this. Uh, the reason why I don't remember is because we get the items like halfway through a dialogue that lasts for three episodes longer or something, or just like a dialogue chain that is gonna last for a long time and I just forget about them. Um, so, but you might remember where we got them. It doesn't really matter. Let's just, I guess, mess with them. Who am I? 
The spinning panes within the cube show the and then halt entirely, revealing a single image at the center of the cube. A burning ship on a stormy sea. The object fades, particles... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mess with this before. Uh, the object fades, a particle by particle, with no further explanation. You've either received the exact answer to your question through an, an idiom you have no hope of grasping, or the cube completely mi misunderstood you. A uh, figure on a burning... Uh, no, a burning ship on a stormy sea. So I defy... I defy... I mean... It, ships do burn. Because they burn from the inside out. I mean, the, the wet part of the ship is the outside, right? Uh, why is the sorrow hunting me? The spinning panes within the cube slow, then halt entirely, revealing a single image at the center of the cube. A perfect sphere of dark chocolate held in a bird's claw. The object disappears behind the spinning panes uh, as the cube prepares for your next question. That... what? Tell me why the sorrow is hunting me. It... Uh, Four slender, overlong fingers laid upon a pale wrist. There's another... what? This is the same question, but why is it a different answer? Sp hmm. Let's see if he says anything different. A freshly baked pastry mounted in with cream and glossy fruit held within two... Oh, okay, so I, I see what it is. I see what it is. I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Can you explain? The spinning cubes do uh, long purple vegetables of some kind, sliced lengthwise to reveal orange seeds. Who are you? The cube goes utterly opaque for uh, several seconds before the pains reappear. Can you tell me what you are again? Oh! So that's the only question that it actually... Oh, except for this one. Let's see if this one is the burning ship. No, a bucket filled to the brim with dead grass and gems. <laughs> well, that doesn't really tell us anything. Although the... What you are is just a pack, yeah, I suppose. Uh, okay, so let's see these mirror casters. So we have these two over here that uh, I know for... Well, I don't know for a fact that I didn't look at. So let's see the circulator mir uh, circulating mirror caster, because I think I got this one before. Within the endless loop of this strange alembic golden fluid... Oh, yeah, I remember this one. The mirror caster is quiet and unresponsive. If there's no way... Uh, it seems there's no way to access it again. Yeah, we did that one. Of course we did. Uh, what about this one? Was this the one that uh, Adiris gave us? As you cradle this device in your hands, you smell the tang of salt water, and the growth beneath your feet seems to shudder and, and sway. The mirror within it calls to you in soothing rhythmic pulses. Okay, uh, so this one is new. You peer through the device into a void larger than the thing in your hands could contain. From the far end, a shapeless mass reaches across the distance faster than, you bl than a blink, and obscures your view of it with an amorphous limb. Well, let's enter it. That really wasn't a, a, a welcoming sight, but what is this? Honestly, what? Oh, it's a big whale! It's the big whale! <gasps> you guys remember this? We saw a big whale, I don't know, uh, was it a memory? Was it in the, um... It was a memory, wasn't it? Uh, where was it, though? Uh, I don't remember if it was in the, in the necropolis or in uh, Mill Avast. But yeah, there was a whale that came with, um... With, um... Man, there's weird things. I think that... Mm. Yeah, they came with a, a village on top of it, and it was destroyed by Saga's Cliffs. So let's see, indigo waves rise in the wake of the huge martelling whale bearing down on Saga's Cliffs. Its flanks blocks out the sun, its flank blocks out the sun, its shadow sweeps over your meager dow and a whole swath of sea. From high up on the beast's back, a lookout beans, uh, leans down. Plague! He cries in a voice that seems too faint, even considering the distance. His warning is unnecessary. The yellow jack flag flapping from the mast can be seen as all way uh, can be seen all the way from the city. As the lookout stares directly at your dow. Oh, so that's my that's a boat. So that's why. Okay, is there a boat down here? But I have a yellow jack. What did he call it? A jack? Yeah, flag. A flag. Yellow yellow jack. Oh, that's what it is. A yellow jack flag. Yeah, I. Anyway, uh, as Lookout stares directly at your Dao, he cocks his head quizzically and rubs his eyes, plainly confused to see no one in the boat. The l hmm. Am I invisible or something? The light bender on your... Oh, I am. The light bender on your belt does its work well while its charge lasts, anyway. After a moment, the man wanders off. 
Snug around your neck, a steel collar trembles and a voice whispers in your head. Hurry, our seaward batteries can turn the whale to mist if they must, but better to save our fire for a darker day. After a moment, the collar buzzes again and the voice adds, Eliminating contagion is doctor's work, and no doctor would use a saw when a scalpel will do. Go now, cut what you must, and make sure that this sickness does not reach our city. Oh, okay. Wait, wait a minute. This sickness? Oh, the, they're not talking about the plague here. They're talking about you putting a plague in here. And that's the sickness. I wonder if they are mutants or something? Hmm. And finally the voice says, And don't worry, your body can fall prey to their disease. Huh. The color goes still. The whale's leathery side looms above you like a leaving cliff. Somewhere up there are the men and women carrying death towards your home. Wait a minute, how did I... I don't understand what the plague thing was then. Um, let's gather any gear in the Dow. Uh, the, tool of you, the tools of your trade are housed in a locker beneath the, twor the thwart. Housed climbing... Uh, hooked climbing claws, your wind slide... Wind slice blade, hmm? and a concussive crystal pulsing with explosive power. You quickly secure them. Claws on your hands, sword at your side, crystal on your belt. Remaining in the locker is a small waterproof ledger, which is better left there. There is also a harpoon of azure steel sunk deep in the whale's flesh and tied to the dow's by a to the dow by a sturdy cable. It would be hard to pull free, and in, in any case, it will keep your boat tied to the beast. Okay, uh, let's um, let's search for anything else of use. There is nothing, and the color around your neck bu uh, <laughs> is buzzing incessantly, th though wordlessly. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's uh, read the ledger. Judging it too long to read in its entirety, uh, entirety, you open to a page at random. In a meticulous hand, there is a date, and below it, three for the greater good. Huh. You flip to another page, and in seemingly no more than a date and a short entry, one for the greater good, one of necessity. Oh, these are ledgers of terrible things that are done or something? As you skim, only the dates and numbers change. Any contemplation is cut short by a shudder from your collar and a sharp voice in your mind, do not tarry. Hmm. This is the... Who's got... This is a memory... Hmm. I don't really understand that, but yeah, let's uh, let's use the climbing claw to scale the whale's side. You sink the climbing claw into the whale's tough hide, and leaving a bloody trail behind you, quickly climb your way up. As you ascend, the steady lapping of waves fades and the wind grows, but there comes no sound of the leaving or dying village built upon the martelling's back. Finally, you crest the whale's flank and pull yourself over the top. Silence, like a miasma, hangs over the empty driftwood shack. Uh, shacks. Bits of bone, sheets of synth, crude abandoned tools, these are the only signs that people once thrived in this unusual home. The lookout has left no tracks, and in the, money, in the moments you spend scanning the narrow, thrash-strewn uh, thr street, that's, that's a word right there, uh, or words, no one else emerges. Beyond this bleak emptiness, two things rise. Nearby, a kind of pavilion or howdah built atop the whale's head, and in the distance, a huge stone stern castle at the whale's rear. A beam of light streams from the stern castle to the howdah, encasing the latter in, the, in an iridescent bubble, some sort of shield by the look of it. There is nothing else of note. Okay, so... Let's uh, investigate how that first. You hustle down the lanes that wind their way up to the whale's head until you are almost flush upon the force field. You cannot quite see what lies beyond it. Shifting rainbow hues hint at a humanoid shape, but that means little. Clouds in the heavens can seem human too. The shield radiates enough heat to warm against touching and flashes engulf any detritus that brushes up against it. The only thing that touches it unharmed is a ribbon of power running from the force field all the way down, all the way to the distant stern castle. No doubt that is where the shield is generated. Uh huh, okay, makes sense. Uh, so let's, I can climb, climb one of the shacks. That's probably gonna be bad if I do that because they're probably gonna just break under me or something. Uh. Let's fling the concussive crystal at the force field. 
As the cipher strikes the force field, there is a flash of light and a thunderclap, one that seems all the louder for the oppressive silence that preceded it. Your senses return, revealing that you have gotten no good f uh, no good from your effort. The force field shimmers on unperturbed, the umbilicus of energy running from the stern castle is uncut, and your crystal is now no more than a drit blowing in the sea breeze. Yeah... Ah, well, whatever. Let's search for survivors. After a sharp turn, you slip into a square that is half smothered by the stench of what seems a heap of garbage. Without a shudder, you see it is, in fact, a mound of rotting bodies. Cornered between the corpse pile and a rusting sheet metal shanty, a woman guards a few canned goods against a crowd of lean-faced men and women. Their gestures might seem mere speechless beseeching were it not for the woman's torn flesh and one man's bloody nails. She hoarsely warns them, uh, warns them off, vowing to die fighting. And die, surely she will, though these half-starved foes would pose no threat to a trained warrior like you. Though you are nearly close enough to touch them, the light bender hides you from sight. Uh... Why would I attack the crowd? She's gonna die. I'm here to kill them all. She's gonna die fighting. Yeah, I cannot let them distract you from my mission. Sleep past them to the stern castle. At last you arrive at the Stern Castle, a towering edifice of steel and stone that is a seat of power, uh, that it, that it is a seat of power would be clearer enough, even with, um, without the, uh, ribbon of energy streaming from its tower towards the distant Taura. A large mob has gathered on the, uh, Stern Castle steps, and a many men, many of the men and women mutely pound upon the gates. Their silence and the flatness of their effect is striking. As you watch their ineffectual siege, more file in behind you. You blindly forcing you to forward, cutting off any means of retreat. For now, th for now, thanks to the Lightbender, they have not seen you. Okay. Uh, so let's see. I kill out the mob and urge them to seek an accord with the without nah. Let's climb the stern gate wall, the stern castle wall, and gain entry through a window. As the mob spots you ascending, they fall upon you with senseless desperation. Sharp nailed hands clutch at your limbs, cudgels batter your body, but your climbing claws have a good grip, and your arms and legs are strong, stronger than most anyone's, and stronger than those of these sick fo folk by a wide measure. Eventually, you work your way out of their reach, safe if not unscathed. Above your above you shimmers the beam of energy fueling the Haura's distant force field. Below you faces contort in voiceless rage. You give both sides but the uh, you give both sides but the quickest glance before swinging your way through an open window. You land deftly in a great hall. The Stern Castle's defenders are a few dozen men and women armed with little more than spears and marlin spikes. One of them has a few healing ciphers, another wears a richly dyed robe adorned with glittergar scales. No one, no, no doubt she's their leader. The tall ho the hall holds little else as interesting save uh, a large Numenera that uh, streams energy out through a window, feeding the force field at the whale's head. The defenders' leader addresses you, her voice oddly accented. Welcome to Folkhaven, Emissary, she says gently. I speak for the folk. We must dock in your city. We are in desperate need of healing, as you saw when you faced the Unspeakables. We beg your aid in these dark days. Uh, who are these unspeakables? Three of our folk hold in a net that held a foul catch, a thing partwise fish and partwise woman, but long and bald and clawed, big with child and clutching in its grips, a, a thing that glowed, some sea cipher, she shakes her head, so I have heard it said. They flung the foul thing back, but not before it seemed to touch their minds. Those three were the first to fall silent. Her voice is low but strong as she continues. The plague spread up Fisher's Lane, then through the cannery, sealing voices as it went. Stealing, not sealing, stealing voices as it went. Bereft of their words, these thinks, uh, these sick are cut off from the bonds that hold us folk together. Left uh, lost and alone, they go mad and turn unspeakable till the quiet death takes them. Uh, why don't the unspeakables just communicate by writing? Many of the folk recoil in disgust, but the speaker does not flinch. Of course, a stranger cannot know our ways of wisdom. Or wisdom. She gives a gesture that suggests exactly what she thinks of your ignorance. A spoken lie lasts but a breath, and those who hear it can answer with the truth. But a written lie lingers long past the lives of those who know it to be false, enduring, it, uh, enduring until it can lead an entire race astray. Um, she nods decisively. So spoke the first of the folk who survived the sinking, and we have lived since by their words, free from the perils of pen and ink. Ah, okay, so 
Yeah, so afraid of... This is the typical... This is the typical conundrum. conundrum. You're so afraid of what is bad that you shut away all that is good as well. Because, you know, you can flip the... I mean, what she says makes sense. But you can also flip it the other way around. So, you know, it's pointless. It's the whole thing. It's just, you know... You know and besides... Uh, if you you're just looking at it, you know, from a perspective of you know, there's law and there's order, and then you make up a law in order for whatever fits your perspective of the world. But then there's pragmatism, and uh, in pragmatical terms, lies just endure longer when spoken than than when written, uh, because of something called uh, there's a word there's a word for it. Um, ah, dang it! Oh, there's a word. There's a reason for that. Anyway, I'm going to comment it down below. Uh, doesn't matter. We're out of time for the day. Let's uh, continue and messing with them on the next episode. For now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Torment, Tides of Numenera. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.